Hi, officially, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, welcome to our weekly Ask NCAR program. This is the third one that we've done and we're doing it every week. So thanks for joining us today. My name is Tiffany and I'm an education specialist at NCAR, the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm here with my colleague James Doan today and he's a scientist at NCAR. We're obviously both joining you from our homes, just like all of you are in your homes, but we're continuing to do our work. And so we thought it would be fun to share some of the work with you every week. So that's what we're doing. Each week, we meet with someone who works at NCAR and we talk to them for a little while and learn about what they do in their jobs. And then we take questions from you, anything that you wanna know about the work that they're doing. One really cool part about working at NCAR is that there are so many different kinds of jobs that you can do. So you can be a scientist, but you don't have to be. You can also be an engineer, or you could be an electrician, or a computer programmer, or a machinist, or a safety expert. We have all of those people working at NCAR, and they're doing all their different jobs in order to support the scientific research that's happening there. So it's a really cool place. So as I mentioned before, we're gonna use the chat box and um, we're gonna leave microphones and videos off so that James can show us some cool stuff with his screen. And throughout the program, feel free to enter any questions that you have into the chat box. I'll be keeping an eye on those and I'll share them with James either in little breaks throughout his presentation or we might save some questions till the end too. Um, I think that that's about it. If every, I see that some people have checked in and said hello in the chat. We've got folks from Thornton and Erie and Boulder and Longmont and Superior. Uh, so thanks for joining us. And like I said, just use the chat box to enter any questions for James as we go. And with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to James and, and let him tell us about all the cool stuff that he's doing. Great. Well, yeah, thanks, Tiffany. And hello, everyone. Yeah, welcome. <clears throat> I'm glad you could all dial in. Uh, it's good to be here and good to have this discussion with you about hurricanes. So as Tiffany said, I'm a, a scientist here at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. And I, my specialty is hurricanes. So I like to figure out how they work, you know, why they exist, where are they going and how are they changing in the future. So before I launch into that, I'd like to um, just give, a, give you a bit of background about um, how I got got to where I am and um, how I um, <laughs> came to be working at NCAR. Okay, well the accents from the UK, uh, you might have figured that out by now. So I, I grew up in the UK and when I was about <clears throat> you know eight years old, um, my dad was always watching the weather forecast on the TV and he used to find it so boring, you know, I want to be watching cartoons or something. <clears throat> but then when I got to about age 10, I was the one suddenly watching the weather forecast and I had to tell my sister to be quiet. She was always so noisy. Um, and from then on, I was hooked. So uh, at school, I um, studied maths and physics. That, that's what I loved. And I carried on doing that at university and college. Uh, and then I moved over to the US. So if you know anything about British weather, you'll know it's a bit boring. So you guys have all the cool stuff. You have hurricanes, tornadoes, and we get drizzle and rain. So I had to come over here and experience some real weather. Um, and while I was over here, I met people at the National Center for Atmospheric Research and managed to get, get a job there. And I've been there ever since. <clears throat> so I'd like to tell you a bit about what I'm finding about hurricanes and how they might be changing in the future. So as Tiffany said, please uh, type in any questions or comments into the chat box. Okay, I'm gonna start with this image of a, of a hurricane making landfall on the Florida Panhandle. This was Hurricane Michael two years ago in 2018. Some of you might remember it. It brought devastating winds, destructive storm surge, and flooding rains to, uh, to Florida and Georgia and Alabama. Now, you might notice something here, and the hur hurricane has an eye. So this is quite a unique feature. Um, so why does this eye exist? Well, if you were to um, drive into the center of a hurricane, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you should, but if you do, you'll experience the winds becoming faster and faster. Uh, and they would increase up to very high wind speeds, and in fact, they extend to infinity. And nature doesn't like infinity. 
So, um, so it forms an eye to stabilize the whole storm structure. So why do hurricanes exist? <clears throat> well, um, they get their energy from the warm ocean. So the winter, the ocean's warm and the, the hurricane sucks out heat and it sucks out moisture. And this is what fuels the hurricane. So going back to the eye of a hurricane, here's a cool picture taken by a hurricane hunter aircraft. So this aircraft actually flew into the middle of the hurricane and they do this quite often, alarmingly. They do it to take observations to, to give us better forecasts of what the hurricane is doing and what it's going to do and where it's gonna make landfall. So this is a cool image inside the eye. So you can see the sun shining down inside the middle of the storm and it's like a stadium. So it's, it's an area of relative quiet surrounded by the fury of these thunderstorms. Hey James, I have a question about the eye. Oh yeah. About how big, I'm sorry, did you say that already? I did not, good question. Eye? Yeah, so um, it can vary. So Hurricane Wilma in 2005 had the record smallest eye. It was just two miles wide. <laughs> but uh, hurricanes out in the other ocean basins such as near Japan and the Philippines, they can be huge. It can be say 200 miles wide. So they really vary quite a lot. Wow. So hurricanes are like breeds of dogs. You know, you get big ones, small ones, <laughs> angry ones, calm ones. So <laughs> they're very different. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so how are these hurricanes changing then? Well, we're going to um, <laughs> look at that here. So can anyone tell me what we're looking at? in this stripy figure here. So here I'm showing some, a visualization of some data. So you can see there's lots of blue colors on the left and lots of red colors on the right. And we're gradually transitioning from blue to red. So if you wanna type in your responses, I'll give you a few seconds to tell me what you think you're looking at here. It's a pretty cool figure when I, when I tell you what it is. <laughs> Anybody have a guess? Oh, someone guessed ocean temperatures, perhaps? Oh, very nice. Or sea surface. We had a couple of guesses about yeah. sea surface temperatures. Or another guess was sound waves. Oh, good one, yeah. So I like ocean temperatures. I should have actually plotted that. <laughs> next time, <laughs> next time I do yeah, this, yeah. we're going to look at, <laughs> look at ocean temperatures. <clears throat> Um, but I'll tell you, this is actually um, <clears throat> the annual average temperature for the United States. So it's over the, over the land now. Um, and the blue colors indicate cooler years and the warm colors indicate warmer years. So you see lots of variability. There's <clears throat> it goes up and down as we go from 1985 to 2018. Um, but on the whole, there's a trend from blue to red. <clears throat> so actually today we're living in a very warmer world than we have done in the past. And this warmer air can hold more water vapor. So this is the gas phase of, of water, can hold more water vapor than cooler air. And so the world around us today is on average warmer and more moist. So how do we think hurricanes are gonna change? <clears throat> well, let's see. Oh, <laughs> these, these stripes have gone viral. You can do fun things with them, even paint your car with them. So. Send, send in your photos of painted cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. The stripes on. Yeah. So this is how I investigate hurricanes that haven't happened yet, because I want to know what they're going to look like in the future. And I do that by running computer simulations of hurricanes. So I, I build my own computer simulation, and that simulation contains all the processes in the climate system. So they're depicted here. So I, I input the mathematical equations for clouds, for ocean currents, for rainfall, snowfall, sunlight. Um, it's amazing to me how they're just all based on maths and physics. So we can, we can code them up. So I write them in a language that the computer simulation understands and feed it to the computer. And then I, um, I tile the Earth's atmosphere. You see all this gridded tile over the Earth and each tile contains these mathematical equations. And these equations tell us where the ocean currents are going. They, the currents can flow across tiles and we have clouds moving across the tiles and I can look forwards in time and this simulation tells me what <clears throat> the weather's going to be like tomorrow, five years from now, even a hundred years from now. Now there's a lot of tiles on the earth there, <clears throat> so it takes a lot of computer power 
And so I'm lucky enough to work with uh, one of the world's fastest supercomputers. There's an image of it here in the bottom right. So this is NCAR's supercomputer that we uh, do uh, climate research on. And this is actually based in Cheyenne. Uh, so I, I can log into this machine and run these computer simulations. Okay, so, so what are these simulations telling us about hurricanes? Well, we're seeing heavier rainfall. Here's an image of uh, students going to school on this bus. I'm not sure I'd want to be on that, on that bus. This is in Houston just after Hurricane Harvey. Do you remember Harvey was uh, a world record breaker for the wettest storm in southern Texas uh, in the Houston area? Um, a very devastating event. It caused inland flooding and storm surge, which stopped the runoff of the, the freshwater flooding and it all just, uh, the sea levels just rose and rose. So why do, why do we think we're seeing heavier rainfall in the future? So what do we know about the atmosphere in the future that pertains to, to rainfall? So does anyone have any ideas? If you do, uh, type them into the, the chat box and we can discuss. Um, one idea that's been shared, James, is warmer weather and more evaporation. Exactly. I like it. Yeah, so um, the air is warmer and it, it demands more moisture from, from the surface. So it sucks out moisture from the ocean, but also from the land. So it, it drives out moisture from plants and vegetation and the soil surface. So the atmosphere is more moist. So yeah, there's more, more water vapor to rain out. Good one. What else are we seeing about future hurricanes? Well, we're seeing stronger winds. And a good example of that was Hurricane Michael that came ashore in the Florida Panhandle. And here's the devastation. Um, many of the homes completely destroyed. Apart from these homes here, these were actually um, built within the past five years or so. They were built to be stronger and they can withstand stronger winds. Um, but either way, it's pretty devastating to this community. So why, why do we think the uh, winds are now stronger than they ever were? And we think they're gonna get even stronger in the future. What's going on here? If you'd like to type any any ideas, or if you know the answer, type it in into the chat box. <laughs> so I'm waiting to see if there are any other ideas. One idea that came in is um, a warmer ocean. There's another a question saying, are there stronger winds when there's warmer weather? You guys know all the answers. That's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, we not only is the atmosphere warming, but the oceans are warming too. And in fact, uh, the oceans have a long memory. So once they start to warm, it, it's very difficult to stop them. Um, and because the oceans are, are warmer, there's more fuel for the hurricane. And that fuel drives the circulation of the vortex of the hurricane. So yes, um, there's a, a direct relationship there between warmer oceans and stronger hurricanes. Um, and in fact, for this year, uh, the current ocean temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are warmer than normal. And so forecasts for this year are for um, more frequent hurricanes and slightly stronger than average. So um, we'll have to see what happens this year. Okay. So finally, we're also seeing higher storm surge. So uh, storm surge is the process whereby the, um, the strong strong winds of the hurricane it pushes the ocean around and it actually builds the ocean up higher and then when the hurricane comes ashore all that high water just spills out over the land and it can do so very rapidly and so we've always experienced storm surge but why are we seeing higher storm surge than ever before and why do we expect even higher storm surge in the future so if any ideas um please type away So what do we know about sea levels? Anybody want to share an idea? Um, I'm seeing an idea about sea surface temperature anomalies by latitude and higher sea levels due to warming. Um, and then somebody mentioned expanding water. Does water expand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh, great. 
like I say, you know all the answers. Don't you? <laughs> um, that's great. So we know the oceans are warming and a, a warmer parcel of water occupies a greater volume than a cooler parcel. And so, yes, there's thermal expansion of the ocean. They're, they're occupying a greater volume and so they rise. And we also have uh, melting of land ice. So the, the atmosphere is warmer. It leads to more melting of ice caps <clears throat> that then flow, the meltwater flows into the ocean. So there's actually more water. Not only is it taking up a greater volume, but there's more of it. So sea levels are higher. Um, I think the Gulf of Mexico has risen about 30 inches in the past 50 years or so. And is rapidly leading to land loss and higher sea levels. So whenever a hurricane comes along, it, it's riding on top of a higher base sea level state than it used to. Great. So now what, what about the numbers of hurricanes? So do we, do we expect more or fewer hurricanes? in the future? Um, the answer, I'll tell you, is we just don't know. You'd think we would know. So this is one of these questions that has got me interested in, in hurricane signs. There must be an answer. Um, you'd think the, you know, the oceans are, are warmer and they're expected to continue to warm. So why doesn't this, doesn't this lead to more hurricanes? Well, hurricanes are not just responding to the ocean temperatures, but also what, what else is happening in the environment. So other weather systems can interfere with hurricanes and rip them apart. And we don't know how these other weather systems are changing just yet. So the, there's lots of things to consider. Um, here I'm just showing you an image of um, historical hurricane tracks um, colored by wind speed, just to give you an idea of where where they prowl around over the global oceans, mainly in the tropics, but they occasionally extend outwards and, and impact uh, the US, say Japan, China, Australia, <clears throat> Madagascar. Um, so yeah, there's lots of open questions in, in hurricane science. In fact, one of the most intriguing questions that's been hanging around for about 30 years is why are there about 50 hurricanes every year in the world? So why not five? Why not 5,000? We just don't know. So I need you guys to become a scientist and help us all figure it out. There's, uh, there's lots to learn here. Great, well, I think that about wraps up uh, what I wanted to discuss with you all today. So um, hopefully it's got you all thinking about hurricanes and um, to please carry on with the Q&A and um, let's uh, continue the discussion about hurricanes. Great. So I've got a question to share with you and I'll invite um, everybody else to keep entering your questions. Anything that you'd like to ask James about his work or about hurricanes. And so right now, James, um, a question that came in about prediction and the idea that they're predicting a more active hurricane season this year. And is there more that goes into that prediction than just following kind of the warmer temps this summer? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> people have been making seasonal hurricane forecasts for, for decades now and we use a variety of approaches so we have these computer simulations that i discussed so we can we can run those simulations and we use it, we usually run them hundreds of times under different scenarios to try and get a handle of them um, what's going on and then we also look at past years so we look at past years that are similar to this year and look at what hurricanes occurred in in previous years and it's like a, a an analog year to what might happen this year um, and all these techniques, they incorporate hundreds of different processes. So not just the warm oceans, but like I say, they, they do incorporate these other weather systems that could interfere. They, they incorporate even things like sea ice that can interfere with the whole global circulation. Um, and that's why there's usually a large range in the prediction. Great. And, and here's another, I think this is going back to the, your last slide about the 50 hurricanes. Why are there 50 hurricanes um, in general per year? And somebody's asking, is that number of hurricanes, the 50 number of hurricanes, has that been an average that hasn't changed over time? Oh, nice question. Yeah. Um, so hurricanes are actually a subset of a more generic term that we call tropical cyclones. So tropical cyclones includes tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes. And there's about 90 of those every year, and 50 of those tropical storms become strengthened to become hurricanes. So those two numbers have stayed about level, 
But interestingly, in the past 10, 15 years, it started to go down a little bit. So we're trying to figure out if it's going to continue to go down or if it might go back up to 50 and 90 again. So there's interesting things happening at the moment. It's a, a dynamic and interesting time to figure out how the, how the climate works. Absolutely. And, and one thing that I know, you know, many of us have heard is that we're not with the changes in global climate um, and warming temperatures in general, we're not necessarily looking at more hurricanes every season, but more intense ones. Is that accurate? Yes, that is definitely the case. So um, on average, they'll be more intense, um, but we don't know whether in addition, there'll be more overall or fewer overall, but any hurricane that comes along on average will be more intense than it used to be. I've got another question about your, your background, your experience. Where did you go to school and, and what did you study in school? Oh, I, I was lucky enough to go to the University of Reading in the UK. So that's just um, half an hour train ride outside of London. And that's one of the best schools in the world to study atmospheric science. So I had a, an interest in meteorology, maths and physics. And, and so it was a natural place for me to go. So I stayed there probably for too long. And then, and then I came out into the real world and got a job. So no, that was a, a good school to go to. But um, if anyone's interested in like the good schools to go to in, in the US, then I can talk, talk to them afterwards. Yeah. Great. And someone else asked if you yourself have been near or in a hurricane. Oh, that's a good question. Um, you'd think, given that I talk so much about hurricanes, that I would have experienced <laughs> one. But no, I never have. Um, and I'm not sure I would want to. Um, sometimes you see weather forecasters on, <clears throat> on, the be you know, on the weather channel. They're stood on the beach claiming to be in a hurricane. But if they were actually in a hurricane, I don't think they'd be able to stand up on the beach. So um, <laughs> I'm not sure I don't want to experience one directly. Um, um, but, uh, but it's valuable to collect data on them you know, to improve the science. So I, I work behind the scenes. Well, and then that leads to another question that um, that I got in, and and you've described some of it. How you how how you study hurricanes when you're living in Boulder, Colorado, where we don't have any hurricanes. <laughs> it's a safe place to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we look as researchers. We're lucky. We can log into any any database or any any computer server or supercomputer from anywhere in the world and. I can even log on to the supercomputer with my phone. So it's, it doesn't really matter where you are, you have access to, a, to the data and data collection instrumentation and the, the model, the um, computer simulations. So um, location is not the primary importance, I would say. <laughs> and, and that, um, you mentioned the supercomputer, that took me back to uh, a question that we got earlier about what's the difference between a regular computer and a supercomputer? I mean, it sounds uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, apart from it sounding cool. <laughs> well, it is, it is pretty cool. Um, the one housed in, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, it, if you look to look at it, it's, it's in this huge room and it, it's um, like corridors of uh, machines stacked together. So it's, it's effectively the same as 70,000 desktops all plugged together. So you, you know how fast your desktop computer is and so if you, connect 70,000 70, of them together, then it's very fast. So we can, we can do lots of great science on it. Yeah, great. Well, it's just about time to wrap up, um, but this is an interesting question, I think, to finish with, unless anybody else sends in any other ones. Do you have a favorite hurricane? Mm. Oh, that's <laughs> a good one. Um, there was a very interesting one. Probably not many people have heard about it unless you were in it. Humberto. Um, the interesting thing about it was it, it exploded in intensity right next to the coast. So no one really thought much about it. It was just a, a very weak area of thunderstorms in the Gulf of Mexico. And then it really exploded to be a hurricane right before landfall on the Texas coast. Um, and it caught everyone by surprise. And so that's, that's an interesting question. You know, are we gonna experience more of these exploding hurricanes right at the coast? They're a very challenge for emergency managers to deal with these kind of things. So 
this is why we need to improve our forecasts and improve our understanding of what's going on. Absolutely. Okay, well, it looks like our questions have slowed and that's probably pretty good timing because it's been about 25 minutes. So I would just like to say thank you, James, for joining us today and sharing some of your work. And I'd like to say thanks to everybody for, for joining us and, and asking your interesting questions. Um, I am going to put in the chat real quick that we do, like I mentioned at the beginning, we do an Ask NCAR like this every week now. And next week it'll be on Wednesday as well. And I'm putting into the chat right now the link to our webpage on virtual programming. That's where you can find the schedules and the Zoom links for upcoming programs. And if anybody is interested, I'm gonna put one more link in that takes you to a more general page where we've got lots of educational resources. We've got activities and lessons and information and videos all about the atmosphere and the sun and air and weather and climate. Um, so feel free to get on there for more resources and hopefully some of you will join us next week uh, for our next one. Next week we'll have somebody telling us about her adventures doing some weather research in Argentina. That's going to be a fun one too. And James, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, everyone. Great questions. And thanks for coming today. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>